Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Psycho Turks Podcast. We're on episode 154, and uh, Dave is missing in action today. I'm not sure what's up. He'll probably join us. I'm, we hope he'll join us. I hope he's still alive. I mean, he is old. So. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but today, uh, excited to have uh, John Dunbar with us, and or with me, I should say, and uh, <laughs> John's a buyer at uh, Bob Cycle Center in Roseville and Fair Oaks, and uh, used to work at Eden Bicycles, and has also now just started his own podcast called Embedded. Yeah, uh, that's right. Yeah, so uh, we'll talk about all that stuff, but John, welcome to the podcast. Hey, thanks, Mike. Yeah, man, I'm stoked to be on and, uh, you know, recording. I feel like nowadays it's like I'm recording mine, now I'm jumping on this. It's Yeah. It's fun, you know, it's totally fun. Sure. Yeah. Well, okay. So, I mean, I don't know if you've listened to our show, but we usually like to find out like how you got started with, uh, with bikes. When did it, when did yep. it hit you? So, you know, at like maybe 10 or 11, um, I actually started racing, I raced BMX for a little bit. Okay. Um, there was this fun little track in San Ramon off of a uh, Bollinger Canyon. I think oh, yeah. it was, I know. you know, remember at the top of the hill there. Yep. Um, so I raced that for probably two, probably, I think it was about two years. Uh, I just never really, you know, got super into it. Um, mm -hmm. you know, where some, some cats were, you know, racing all over the country and, right. um, but it didn't really get to me till about high school. Um, you know, I freshman year, actually, I walked into class, got there pretty early and there was this other dude just kind of sitting in class. I kind of knew him. He was an acquaintance. And, um, you know, he was wearing all this Fox stuff, you know, Fox mm -hmm. racing, you know, he had the, the, the shirt, he had the pants, he had everything. And at that time, I, you know, that was to me, that was more of a, like a dirt bike thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, um, so I just kind of asked him, I go, Hey dude, you ride, you ride dirt bikes. He's like, no man, I, you know, I ride uh, downhill mountain bikes. Um, so a couple weeks go on, we're just kind of chit chatting and he's watching this, uh, you know, all these videos on his phone of, uh, of the downhill stuff. And, um, and it was all pink, you know, all on pink bike. Yeah. And I, I'm watching it. I'm like, damn, that looks so fun, dude. Like <laughs> I would love to get on that. Um, and I think at that time it was the, uh, uh, Danny Hart was racing for giant. Oh yeah. And you remember that? The world the, championship video. Yes. Yep. And With Rob uh, Warner. Oh yes. my God. Losing his mind. That was so fun. It was so fun, man. <laughs> and, you know, it was just like, wow, like I would love to try that, you know? Yeah. Um, so one day he just he said, come over, dude. Like, um, you know, I'm sure you got a bike, like find it. Let's just go ride. And I get there and it's just, I mean, there's bikes everywhere in his house, man yeah i mean just everywhere i mean his dad was his dad used to race thor is his um his brother hans he was racing at the time and um he pulls out his bike and it's just the you know it's the glory it's the zero right so it's full oh, okay. fox full shimano saint just you sick. know was, I was, yeah totally sick and i was just like oh my god dude what am i in for right now <laughs> <laughs> right I'm yeah. on my dad's, you know, 2005, you know, giant NRS. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's like polar opposite, right? The NRS versus the glory. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'm kind of downhill. Yeah. I'm on this like pogo stick when he's on this like, you know, couch pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, let's let's welcome Dave in. Yeah. Diet oh. Pepsi. There it is. Yep. <laughs> Dave, uh, Sorry, guys. I just, uh, when I got your email, Mike, I was uh, busy yesterday and I just, I thought, oh, four o'clock tomorrow. Great. So <laughs> apologies. That's all right. Hey, and, Dave. And, uh, and uncharacteristically, I actually slept till about 6.55 today. I normally up at 5.30, so I didn't even check. Oh, my God. So, yeah. Slacker. Are we recording we, now? Or yeah, we're, we're we're live, dude. We're uh, on, oh. man. Yeah, we were we were we wondered if you were still live. <laughs> well, I'm not you sure, are. Mike. You know, I I, uh, I I want I questioned that myself when I woke up this morning. <laughs> I 
Okay, yeah. so I just because we have an audience, I'm going to break it to you. Yeah. I'm not doing your visions of grandeur ride. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, come on. So come on, I, I said, Dave. No, listen, I set out I set out to do we had 153 planned on Saturday, right? Oh, God. Yeah. And I got to 8 mile 80 and I'm like I feel good. I got this. <laughs> yeah. Physically. Mentally I'm going I don't want to be on the fucking bike. I'm like, I'm done. <laughs> like, I like, I mentally, I could say, no problem. Let's get to, uh, let's let's get to 120, and I'll call it a day because I could look at that and go, oh, that's only from here to the Sonol train station. That's easy. But I was sitting there looking, going at 80. I'm, I'm like pedaling, like we're we're flying, and I'm like, this is get this. I'm going. I got five more hours on the bike and I don't want to be here. Mercifully, I crashed. Oh, no. <laughs> Mercifully, I crashed and I had to take an Uber, uh, you know, back to uh, the start line. So, oh, you took an Uber? I was, I was dazed, man. Oh, I was dazed. I, I would have kept wow. going, of course. You know, the natural reaction is, well, I'm fine. Just let's pedal. Um, but someone, was looking at me and they go no and they they called an uber before i could i had any say in the matter and uh took it yeah do they have an option for bike they yeah, if you get an uber xl well, I, I think the xl about, yeah no. i don't know anything about uber I don't so know. i'm like i don't you know i i didn't even have the ability to cancel it because i felt like i could go on you know Mm -hmm. um, but someone else had ordered it and so apparently if you get an xl they throw you know it's a, like a minivan or an suv and they throw the bike in the back and i bled all over the guy's car and <laughs> jeez <laughs> well listen uh visions of grandeur is not just an ordinary ride it you know you're talking about just it doesn't, with all due respect to your ride on saturday what you're in a group your guys are going fast at 80 mile yeah that's different than visions of grandeur it's a different type of ride. It's a different experience. Yeah. Yeah. The mic. The only the guy that only knows one speed, which is all you know, a block. Right? <laughs> Full <laughs> so, gas. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, listen. You all just, right, let's go. Enough you about me, John. Nice to meet you. Hey, good to meet you, Dave. You guys don't know each other. Um, I mean, no of of you. Mm -hmm. Um, I knew you ran oh. a shop. You know, you you uh, you owned a shop, and I I visited one time. I think I was uh. I went to I was in that area and I went to go say what's up to Will because Will was working at that shop for a little bit. Oh yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah. Okay. Well. Um. Okay. So you were telling us how you got into it. You got you got over to your buddy's house and he's got uh, the Glory Zero. You're on an NRS. Yes. And you guys are gonna go right. <laughs> yep. Uh -huh. Yeah. So you know he he had this little um this little trail behind his house or kind of by his house. It was a shuttle trail. So his mom was able to pick us up at the bottom and, you know, go back to the top, which was always fun. Nice. Um, and, and you know, from that Mother ride of the year, Holy cow. Right. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but from that ride, it was just, you know, his, my buddy was Jenner Polson, which you guys, you know, probably both yeah. know. Yeah um he was just ripping i'm i'm behind him just trying to you know be on his back wheel and um and it was pretty much from that bike ride it was just like oh i'm all in you know mm -hmm. I just i'll find a bike I, you know i think i um i got to ride his bike and um at that point i was playing baseball a ton you know i was on the you know baseball team for uh the high school and I was like, oh, forget baseball. I'm done. Like, let's <laughs> let's ride a bike, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's funny you say that. I, you know, I played baseball, um, played baseball all my life, right up through high school. And then I yeah. went away to college and played softball. And then after college, played softball. Then I got into a over 30 hardball league. Oh, oh wow. You know? Oh, wow. And I mean, we out. And, uh, and you know, as what was the what's the line from Saturday Night Live? Like baseball's been very, very good to me, right? <laughs> um, but I look back now after I found the bike and I go, what a fucking waste of time. Like, <laughs> why? Why? <laughs> right? <laughs> what was I thinking? What was uh, I doing back then? I can't right? even go to a base I can't even go to a baseball game now and watch it. And so anyway, Oh uh, man. We'll say I still love baseball. I still love uh, going. 
Um, I, lo- I love baseball too. I mean, I but love it. I, I did coach and, um, oh. I, I, I coached for years and I love, I, I love the game, but, um, my, uh, the last year that we coached, it was, I didn't coach high school. Okay. So there there might've been an opportunity to coach high school, but you have to be there every day at three, three forty five. It's oh not God. realistic if you have a job. <laughs> no. Uh, and a but, wife. <laughs> um, yeah. But, um, but we, so we did, uh, <clears throat> junior 90, junior eighties, 90, I forget, but, um, all the way up to high school. And the guy that I coached with, he, he actually played in the Dodger organization and he, oh. he was, uh, he didn't, he never made the big leagues, but he huh. played, uh, nine years and he's a catcher. And, uh, man, this guy taught me so much about baseball. His name's John, ha- John Hallowell. Okay. And, um, we, I mean, we just had a great, great time working together and, um, I learned so much and, um, huh. but he was talking about high school, uh, and how hard it is at high school to keep the players. He's like oh. one minute, you got the guy, he's, he's your ace pitcher and he's batting fourth. And then next minute he's in love and he never wants to play baseball again. Wow. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so and then you, you found love of a different kind. Yeah. It's like hey. laters. <laughs> yeah. I'm done, dude. I'm yeah. good. It's yeah. Got, it's gotta be hard to keep, uh, keep those players engaged, you know, at uh, high school level. Of course, man. You got so much new, th- new experiences going on at that time. Right. You know, yeah, uh, right. you have, you have the guys that are just totally in it. Like they're playing uh fall ball, summer ball. And then you yep. just, and then you have me. Hey, yeah. oh, I found a bike. <laughs> uh-huh. yeah. And I'm gone. <laughs> a bike or a girl. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> One of you both. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Classic. Yeah. So uh, at the time, was, was Jenner already working at Eden? You know, uh, he was actually. Um, yeah. Yeah, he was working at Eden. He he was just, you know, at that 15 and a half point where he could actually begin to work. Mm-hmm. And uh yeah, totally jealous at that point. He actually <laughs> sold me my first bike that I bought. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I was, nice. you know, doing all this research and um, I was like, dude, you know, I, I, at this price point, you know, I can buy a giant rain. You know, yeah. I think it was the the two or the three, the very entry level one. Yeah. Um, But yeah, yeah, he was working there for sure. Yeah, right on. So- so you went like to Mach Seven right away. Like you didn't like just go buy like a, with all due respect, the giant. You didn't go buy a Talon and start to ride this. You would like <laughs> like oh, I I I, I bar- borrowed my friend's bike. I love going fast downhill, and now yeah. I'm going right to the rain. Yep, straight yeah. to the rain. And I didn't even have enough money. Honestly, I had to convince my dad to finance it for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's uh, I mean that it. That's a proper bike, though. If you're, you know, yeah. you're trying to hang with Jenner, yeah. and he he opened the door to this new world for, to you, yeah. and you know, without getting a full blown downhill bike, I mean, yeah. that's, a, that's a good. It sounds like you did you did a pretty good uh, bit of research there, and maybe you got some good guidance from Jenner, and totally yeah. ended up on the right platform. So, <laughs> so absolutely, Jenner is the one that had the the trail right behind his house. Yes, yeah, he Where's was in Hayward. Where, Hayward, there's yeah. like downhill worthy, shuttle worthy trail. It was, I mean, at the time we thought so, right? But okay. it was really just a hiking trail that uh, either him or somebody else put little kickers, you know, little jumps <clears throat> and uh, built the berms out. Um, you know, now looking at it, it's probably more of a horse trail. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty basic. Pretty yeah. basic. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> you know, like, Dave said, mother of the year. I don't know. Yeah. Did you ever see uh, now deceased uh, downhill or Stevie Smith? Did you ever see? There was oh, like yeah. A, uh, I watched some of his stuff. Yeah. And his yep. mom, his mom would shuttle him. Yeah. That yeah. was so, so cool. So sick, dude. Yeah. yeah. And it was the same thing, you know, like that whole, their whole family was bikes, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, they were, and they were connected with Eden, right? Mm-hmm. I think his mom even did like you know um kind of cycling things in the shop they would host like uh training nights and stuff oh um yeah so they were just all bikes so it was it was cool to see 
Yeah. And it sounds like your parents were maybe into it too. Cause your dad had an NRS. I mean, that's not like a, a basic dad bike, you know? No. That's... Yeah. They, they were into it. Um, you know, my dad, uh, when we lived in Castor Valley, he would always, you know, we had Lake Chabot right there. So he would just go out and pedal. He wasn't like super into it, but into it enough where, you know, he had a full suspension and, um, and he understood it. And, you know, we rate, or we, uh, rode a lot of dirt bikes too. So, um, had that background too. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, I remember, um, uh, kind of meeting you at Eden and you were just this young, young kid and, uh, -huh. uh just had all this great energy and was, you know, super enthusiastic. Yeah. And then, um, you know, fast forward, uh, I went, so it was during COVID Yeah. and, I had to drop something off, I think, in the morning on a Saturday. I remember something. that. Yeah. And you yeah. were like, you, you, you're still a young guy. And you had like this whole staff of these older people. And you're just like, he was running the show. And I was yeah. just, I was like, man, check this dude out. You know? <laughs> yeah. Is that at Eden you're running the show? Yeah. 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 That's when yeah. I became uh, the, the store manager. And um, every other week. Uh, I would do this uh, meeting with everybody to to just to either, you know, how are we doing in this section? You know, uh, you know, let's improve over here. Um, you know, give me your in input. You know, I don't want to just be the only guy talking here. You know, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Mike came in one morning and he just he just sit, you know sat there and listened. You know, it was awesome. Yeah, well, and that's <laughs> one of the things that I thought was uh, great about Chris, uh, the owner. You know. Yeah. He would uh, give you these response. A lot of times in a bike shop, the owner will give you a responsibility and then proceed to not let you do the role because right. they, they want to micromanage it. And then yeah. they end up being, you know, but Chris was very much like, hey, I, I want you to step up. I'm going to give you this opportunity. Yeah. And um, and, he, and, I, and he's a good mentor, too, you know. So, absolutely yeah I yeah i think you're being too nice i think he's a lazy sob and wants someone else to do the work <laughs> yeah. well, dude, I'm going, I'm going, I'm... Uh -huh. that might be partially true too you know? <laughs> and maybe he was oh my uh, oh, i go shouldn't for have it. said that he listens to the podcast so <laughs> that'll come to bite me in the ass but i think he's always had i think he always had the idea of um i need to I need to be here less or yes. I need to have some balance in my life. And he, and he works so much. And so I think he was just really striving to try to uh, get people in place, give them opportunities and see if they could uh, rise up. And, you know, totally. obviously John, he did. Yeah. 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 No, I mean, it was at that time too, during COVID. I mean, he was just working, you know, 24 set. We all were really, yeah. Um, you know, 24 seven and, uh, you know, he just, he needed to, to find a way to, to kind of back, you know, work on the business, but not work in the business. Right. Yeah. Um, and I think that's, you know, if you, you find an owner, any owner of any, any business, um, that can do that. It's just, everybody can do a little bit more, um, you know, just a, a little bit off of everyone's shoulder too. So. Yeah. yeah, COVID was a, a, I mean, a weird time in history, but, oh. you know, for a lot of reasons, but, you know, for us that were embedded in the, in the bike industry, what a fucking weird, weird, weird time. So oh my God. Uh, it was yeah. insane. It was yeah. insane. I mean, literally yeah. lines down the block, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It was, yeah. it was unlike anything that we'll ever see again, I think. And, no. you know, when I first started uh, in the bike business, there was this thing called the bike boom, uh -huh. the mountain bike boom. And, yep. um, and so I saw it was similar, but it was nowhere near the scale, but it was right. kind of like a frenzy where everybody felt like they needed to buy a mountain bike. Yeah. And so um, that was kind of, that was fun. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. I mean, that's, you know, I, I talked about that on my podcast too, right? It was just like people related to this, you know, uh, probably the 80s mountain bike boom. I mean, it was just mm -hmm. insane. Yeah. 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 No doubt. Okay. So, so then Eden, uh, you know, they sell the Trek that's... and, uh, wah, wah. Wah, and wah, uh... <laughs> wah. I know. Uh, and then, 
just randomly, I happened to ask you if you're if you would consider like what you were going to do. And then yeah. would you consider maybe uh, working up in Roseville? Because I have a, a great owner yeah. that needs somebody. And totally. uh, and you you would <clears throat> you would said, yeah, me and my girl were talking about moving to Auburn. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So really, well, th that's totally coincidental. You're you're living in Castro Valley. You're thinking about getting out of the Bay Area and in walks Mike. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it was, you know, at that time, I, at first, I thought I was going to maybe work with Trick. Right. Yeah. Um, I was like, OK, you know what? You know, let's let's go through this. But the thing was, um, everybody already had a job offer set for me. Um, oh, yeah. And because as of the if you wanted to become the store manager of Trek, you have to go through these layers of of interviews and, um, you know, and it got to about a month before the switch over. And I didn't I didn't know if I had a job. Wow. Still. Right. So I, I started yeah. reaching out to people. You know, I you know, you came in. I called Jeff Hopkins, you mm -hmm. know, Tom Jackson. Yeah. Um, I said, hey, dude, like, I don't know if I have a job. I think I'm kind of over this guy anyway, you know, uh -huh. right. And, um, yeah, I, you know, so I got on the horn with you and you connected me with, uh, Eric Alley, which is the, uh, the GM of, of Bob cycle center. And, yeah. um, so I, I called him and he's like, okay, cool, man. Like when can you come up here? I go, dude, I'm off tomorrow. I'll, I'm, I'll drive up there tomorrow yeah. and, and chit chat. So, uh, yeah, we, we, you know, made it come together and, uh, man, it's been the best decision I I've made, you know, really, I think so, you know, in my life really. So. Wow. Great. That's yeah. so good to hear. Right. Well, and I know, you know, I know, um, you know, Wayne, I've know I've worked with Eric for, I mean, we've known each other for over 30 years and yeah. And, but you know, Wayne's a, you know, he's such a good guy, man. Such he's a good just, dude. Just a great, great guy. And I just yeah. felt like, man uh who whoever gets on here if you're good and you get on here he's going to take care of you you know yeah. and i knew you were good so um yeah i'm glad to hear it's worked out and you see it as a great decision for you yeah no it's it's, I, it's been amazing yeah i think it's interesting that at the time i was unemployed and you didn't offer that opportunity <laughs> to me Mike, but... <laughs> Just uh, hold on, let me write that down. Uh, when when is your birthday? By the way, I'm going to talk. That's so good. Oh, yeah. man. But yeah. um, no, but let, but you know, let's backtrack a little bit too. And, sure. and I want to be ginger about maybe ginger? this isn't. Yeah, I want to tap dance around this because yeah. I'll be honest. You know, I've met. I don't know. You said. I don't know where I am with this guy, but I've yeah. met the regional manager for track and actually have thrown my hat in the ring. Yeah. And said, you know, if a store manager opportunity came along, I, you know, I would consider it. And yeah. Um, but it, so I, so I, and I haven't closed that door. Sure. Although, um, but it is interesting because here you are a face of, eden yeah right and in walks track if mm -hmm. you will and you're sitting here wondering if you have a job right <clears throat> and then i go back to uh uh livermore cyclery yeah and the mechanic over there has been there for 18 years he's the right hand man of the owner yeah and in walks a tr in, in walks track and they actually make him reapply for his job right yeah and so my my point is not to condemn track for do for doing what they're doing or not offering you a job i have no idea john whether you're good or not i mean yep. i take i trust mike but but it just seems to me that that's one of the the I think the downfalls of these corporate owned stores is you lose that one one to one uh you know what that one to one feel that yep. that which I think who said it the other day uh oh um 
uh, with the when we had the national sales manager for Pinarello on. Oh, Doug. That, yeah. yeah, yeah, Doug. That there's going to be. He seems to see this kind of this trend backwards where there's an opportunity for the local owned business because right yeah. Yeah. um and 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 i i bring this up just because it was <clears throat> not right at the same time i got an email from trek that you know from trek alamo and it said mm -hmm. come join us for our pride uh our, our pride month ride oh okay Right, which is cool. Yeah, but there was so generic that there was nothing local about it. Do you know what I mean? There, yep. and so and and I maybe I'm 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 grasping, but and and, and rambling again, <laughs> but that that speaks to what I was just saying. Right, you're a face, you're a local, you're a known that you're a known entity. Right, and and some of I think that that's being lost by these corporate owned stores and. I think there's certain advantages to it, but I also think that there's a real downside if they don't find that balance between the local feel and corporate. So absolutely, I agree. I mean, honestly, you know, when I left, and there, I wasn't the only one that left too, right? We had a guy named Galen, and he was he was huge in the community, right? Because mm -hmm. he would do the AIDS life cycle rides, and he, he that, what, how many years in, how many years has he done that thing, right? So right? yeah, so, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, he so. Yeah, I mean, and honestly, I I miss my customers I had down down there, right? Uh, sure. Um, you know, obviously, I I told some of them, you know, but I didn't get to talk to all of them. Um, right. Yeah, they. I mean, they just completely, to me, I think, just don't have the community backing um, that Eden did, or or like Livermore did, and all that stuff. It's it got completely sucked out. Yeah, you know, it's interesting too because. Um... If you go into Eden yeah. uh, now, um, there there's probably like I would say a third of the bikes on yeah. the floor. I mean, yeah. it's just it's really it's odd how they've kind of done it there. And then on the wall behind the cash wrap, there is oh. something that speaks to community. Yeah, yeah, and they do. But you know, I have to say, like I do the I do the rodeo cross, yeah, cross, and treks out there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. The Trek stores there. Yeah. And then um, uh, somebody else was, what was the other event? Someone was telling me, oh yeah, well, Trek was out there. So they do have like these, they're out there in the community yeah. doing these events, but the, oh, it was the Prairie City race. I did okay. the Prairie City race and Trek was out there too. And so, um, but it is formulated to Dave's point where yeah. Like, uh, you know, this pride ride uh, kind of had this generic vibe to it. Yeah. And um, and I feel like uh, where when you have obviously when you have an owner who grew up in the town and, yeah. you know, they're engaged in that community at a level that uh, a corporate store just can't can't pull off, nope. especially when they when they end up losing or letting go all of the staff. Yeah. So um, like. I know Cobra, uh, one of the staff members is still there. Yes. There's, so there's two, I think. Um, there is, oh, there is. There's two. There's Andrew State and Cover. Both of them. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's right. Andrew. And Andrew. so, um, but, and then also in that situation, it's a wholesale change of inventory. So yeah. uh, Eden sold Trek, uh, or excuse me, Eden sold uh, Giant and Specialized. Yeah. And then they and then Trek buys them, kicks all that stuff out, and then it's Trek. So all the yeah. existing customers, not only is there the owner and a lot of the staff that they are connected to, the product yeah. that they're connected to is also not there. Yeah, totally so, different. Yeah, it's just a it's just a weird uh, <clears throat> uphill battle. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, you I know, thought that was a little different. I mean, to to buy Livermore cyclery you sort of get it they were a yeah. truck dealer and now yeah. all they're doing is booting out specialized mm -hmm. but to actually have a, a you know a complete sex change operation right <laughs> um you know and, and yeah so it's just kind of talk about the it's an ultimate strategic power move though yeah because because they've basically put a hurting on two 
of their key competitors. Yeah. And they took over market share that they in a in a market where they had none. Yep. And so I mean, checkmate. Yeah. In Castro yeah. Valley. You yeah. Know? I yeah. mean, I, I, I hated they, it. But, yeah. You know, no, obviously I'm sure for you, you didn't like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was terrible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, you doubt you got to respect it on some level because it's just like, man. Yeah. Power move. That's a power move. That's you know? a power move. I, yeah. Look, I, I, and I think that my point that I was going for, and yeah, so clearly, John, we're not interested in anything you, you personal that going into your life because we're just talking about trash. <laughs> right? um, uh, but I definitely think there's merit to it, right? I, th I think there's merit in the power to, you know, to have a, an own st that store. I just don't know what the balance is between, uh, you know, the power of the corporation and the local feel, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I don't, you know, I, I just don't know what that balance is. But if, if someone can strike that balance, then I think <clears throat> there's, there's probably some risk to the, to the LBS, um, yep. you know, but until that balance is found, I, I just don't, you know, I, I, I think that there's going to be that the pendulum is going to swing right back to the LBS, I, you know, yeah. I, you know, it, yeah, you know, like, like, like what, what, it's Doug like was what talking. John said, right. Yeah. I'm sorry, but our, our Doug said like, yeah. yeah, it's great to walk in if you're and want track, but what if you want to decide between track and Pinarella, right? You right. know, I, so, so. Yeah. No, it's it's exactly what Doug was talking about. And it's funny because I listened to that podcast uh, maybe yesterday or the day before or whatever. Um, and it makes sense. Right. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe maybe the the local bike shops will start popping up again, because well, honestly, uh, the tracks and, you know, the specialized shops and uh, a little bit of maybe the Mike's bikes, they're just not getting the job done properly. Right. Personally, I think so. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah I, th I think that, uh, yeah, Doug, Doug was on point with that for sure. I think yeah. and that's pretty common where you'll see industries shift and then yep. it kind of comes back and, you know, pretty, pretty much everything in life, in right. politics, you know, you go yeah. right, left, <laughs> yeah. okay, now we're in the middle. Right. Uh, hopefully we get to the middle again someday. Um, yes, we would love yeah. to see that. <laughs> okay, so... Um, yeah. One of the things, uh, John, I wanted to talk to you about was yeah. you just launched your your new podcast called yes. Embedded. Yeah, Embedded in Cycling. Yeah, so I want yeah. you to tell us a little bit about the uh, the the idea and the inspiration behind that. Yeah, so you know, I launched. I've I've been thinking about this for a while now. I remember, you know, kind of talking to my girlfriend about it. You know, um, and you know, coming up with names and, and, you know, but the, the whole idea is to, you know, bring people on, um, that have either been in the industry for a while or maybe just getting in and, and, and showing them that, Hey, there's a avenue for you anywhere you go, right? You can be, you can work at the bike shop. You can, um, maybe try to own your own bike shop. You can work as a rep. You can work for, you know, uh, within the company, uh, of whatever brand you're looking for. Um, yeah, cause you know, I remember talking to one of my buddies, he manages a shop, uh, in Cena bicycles, uh, and, um, you know, huh? Heard of it. Yeah. yeah. You heard of yeah. it, right? Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, him and I are real good buddies, uh, and he's actually real good friends with my girlfriend too. Um, but you could just kind of tell he, he's not, you know, the owner isn't, always there and kind of not in for it and um you can tell it's kind of he's not excited about his job even though he's really good at what he does i mean he does sales he does service he's he's buying um and he's doing a lot mm -hmm. um but now you know he's going to school to get out of it and you know i just you know i was like man you you have an avenue somewhere right you just have to kind of reach out yeah. um so yeah you know Anyway, the podcast is to try to keep people in the bike shop, show everybody that there is an avenue. Um, cause really the main goal, you know, at the, what I would love to get to is be connected somehow with the NBDA and, mm -hmm. and have some sort of, um, 
I don't know if it's going to, you know, have meetings or, you know, when we, when we go to shows, you know, um, maybe have seminars. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, I want to show everybody that there is a, there is a, a move in the bikes bike world. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, that's cool. I'm, I mean, um, I don't know if you've ever heard of project bike trip, uh, and then it later changed to project bike tech. I think and, I have. Yeah. Yeah. It's in Santa Cruz. I talked to yeah. Chris about it because yeah. it does. Um, but basically the idea is, um, it's like ROP at the, at the high school for right. bike mechanics. Yep. And, um, so the, um, it started in Santa Cruz and there's, there's like seven, there were seven of them in California. Now there's all over the country. Sure. Uh, these, these bike techs and, um, and that's in like I I went and spoke at one of the classes oh, and cool. um and the what I wanted kind of what I wanted to convey to the kids was just exactly like what you're talking about like there's yeah. there's roles in the bike shop there's roles in the bike industry whatever right. whatever your uh, interests are there's a way if you love bicycles you should be able to pursue that interest within the scope of bicycles. Correct. And, um, and so I, and they, and the week before they had somebody in there that was doing filming mm. as a guest speaker. So yeah. they were, you know, they were really into making movies and they love bikes. And so then they started working uh, as, you know, filming bike activities and, and doing that. So um, same idea, you know, yeah. just kind of, uh, yeah, lear learn the skills required to, you know, be successful at the bike shop level. And those skills will take you uh, a lot of places. Yeah. And, yeah. 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 I agree. I mean, it's, it's taken me, you know, look, I mean, it moved me all the way to Roseville, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So no, it's, it's, it's a fun thing. I'm very, I'm pretty stoked about it. I've had all these people reach out already and just like, Hey man, we, you know, when you have a when you have an open spot, like I'm, I'm down to join and, um, yeah, it's, it's just running, you know, families, you know, behind it and, you know, um, yeah. and all these people that I've, I've talked to in bike world, they're just like, Oh man, this is great. So I'm, I'm, I'm really yeah. excited for it. Yeah. It's funny. I, you know, I'm sure I've ranted about this on the, on the podcast before, but I, I have on social media as well. I just, it's a shame it, personally that, the uh yeah i don't know what it is that, that maybe society doesn't take let's just say the trades seriously i think that there's again i think that the pendulum is swinging back yeah. right and you know people are starting to look and go wow you know i can make one hundred and twenty thousand dollars being an electrician or a plumber right yeah but you know i think that the the bike industry falls into that category that it's not and, and i think that the bike industry is going to suffer specifically Wow. around you know from mechanics right like it, i to, so to to your point yeah. i i would absolutely test uh dan hapner and uh -huh. matthias uh, alvarez who are my mechanics and yes. i don't know why god blessed me to get both these guys <laughs> but i would you know i would submit that they were the best they are probably two of the best bike mechanics in the world yeah and someone proved me wrong right someone <laughs> proved me wrong but you know i would submit that they are and neither one of them are in the bike industry now just because ultimately there was a ceiling on what they could make right right and you know there there's a there's a limit and 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 to the point that we were making before i just think that there's a point at which um you know even track is not going to be able to find good mechanics. So they're going to lose people then and people are going to stop coming into the store. If, if you're not feeding that monster, if you're not, you know, keeping people in and training and making them good, then people are going to go elsewhere and elsewhere is YouTube or something. So I just think it's a, yep. it's a, a problem within the industry <clears throat> that people don't see it as take it seriously as a profession. Yes. No. And right. I, I agree, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, on my story of, uh, you know, with Trek and how hard it was to, to get the job and all these different steps to it. I mean, you know, there was points where I was just like, man, like, 
am I getting kicked out of bike world right now? <laughs> right. You know, right. Yeah. Um, cause you don't feel wanted at some point. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, you just, you know, you have to, you have to reach out to people cause there's, there's people like Mike and you guys and, um, that are still in it and there's definitely connections, right? Yeah. I feel like the, when you have the skills, mm -hmm. uh, there is some, there's a lot of flexibility, right? Yep. You could like, um, you know, for example, yeah. as a bike mechanic, Maui. you want to go live in Maui for a couple of years, you know, you're going to yeah. be able to find a bike shop. It's going to pay, you know, a lot of those guys have like little live in situations mm -hmm. and, you know, if that's what you want to do, you got the skills, you know, you can go, you can go live in Maui for a couple of years and then maybe, yeah. maybe move, move to Austin for a couple of years. And then, you know, if, if that's the life you want to live, yeah, you know, just having those skills, uh, there's always a need for a quality bike mechanic and especially someone that can go a little bit beyond that too. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I can kind of like, jump on the sales floor a little bit too. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So if you got all the skills, um, you know, granted in some areas, it's really hard to make a living. Yeah. Um, you know, you need two incomes or you need a good living situation to make it. Sugar mama. One off. Right. Yeah. Sugar <laughs> mama. Yeah. Uh, but you know, in some markets though, you know, you can go and, you know, you can make a good living for that area. You yeah. Know? So absolutely. John, John, you're not just focused on, um, uh, you're not just focused on uh, mechanics, right? You're just in the industry in general. Industry because, in be general. Because I think the same thing applies, mm -hmm. right? Like I'm not, you know, I'll leave the name out of it, but like I, I actually did apply I substitute teach and I did apply at an, at another bike shop um, or part-time work just to supplement, you know, and like a weekends and a couple of afternoons just to, to supplement yeah. that. Yeah. And uh, apparently they hired two other people. Right. And, and uh, they had, they had two openings and I didn't get hired. I'm like, who the fuck is more qualified to work <laughs> here than like, like, like really right you know <laughs> but so there's also i think you know some uh, that's why i said it brought this thing up like there's uh, beyond the mechanic there's a certain um knowledge of for sales yeah. right and and in knowledge of other products in the industry right so it's just it's yeah. not a sales and then i think as a writer i'm you know, I'm a little bit more qualified than some high school kid to talk about what bike is right. You know, yeah. I, I, the, no, this is, bike isn't right for you. This is, oh, this is how you ride. This is what you should be buying, right? Yeah. So I, I, I think our industry will also suffer um, if we don't have just knowledgeable, even just salespeople and store managers, right? You, yeah. you, 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 you really want to, bring in a store man, a, somebody that has retail experience, but their experience is, is managing a Cinnabon. Right. You know, to, <laughs> right. And, and that's happening. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, I mean, just uh, the, my uh, local Trek store, which is, uh, well, Folsom, I, there, I guess there is one in Roseville, but mm -hmm. I think that manager, he used to manage like a Best Buy. Right. <laughs> You're going to try to sell a bike? I mean, I know you could uh, probably sell something, but dude, like. All right. Hey, uh, and, and in fairness, right? In fairness, mm -hmm. you know, like I listened to, I, I listened to Chris when he had Eden and he's like talking about his KPIs and, and yeah. all that stuff. And, and so there is some merit to somebody that's come from a corporate world mm -hmm. and. Yeah understands that there are certain metrics that need to be met in order for us to make our sales goal right yep. but you can teach those right i think you can yes. get someone and get them through their if you were working in a tech company or there's a there's a progression where you go through training and management and all that right, right. And you get right. learning it you, you know unless you're writing or unless you're buying this shit you don't know you you, you know the difference between yeah. You know, the gray and red look cleats, right? right. So, <laughs> yeah. 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 It's so hard. I mean, the, there's so much information that you have to have uh, knowledge of. Yeah. Um, just 
just to get through like a, a regular customer a lot of times, you know, yeah. uh, tire, wheel compatibility, uh, tubeless tubes. I mean, it yeah. just goes on and on and on. Oh, and yeah. To think that you're going to take a guy who ran a Best Buy who's sl slinging refrigerators and and di and uh, you know 48 inch plasmas or whatever the hell it is, you know, it's like yep. and now you're gonna. Uh, I'm sure somebody in TVs is like, he just said 48 inch plasmas. This guy's such a tool; he doesn't even know <laughs> yeah. his products. Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah, but it's the same kind of thing, right? It's yeah. like uh, there's no way you're gonna just slide into a bike manager, a bike shop, and then yeah. and I mean, the learning curve is just ridiculous. And that's not, it's, it's kind of a slam against the industry, mm -hmm. I think, because the industry, uh, we're so driven by innovation yep. that these standards, you know, what was, I mean, there are no standards. That's the only standard is yeah. there are no standards. So uh, every custom frame, it's like, oh, what bottom bracket does that have? What's the headset? Well, what the fuck? Oh, okay, the fork? Oh, wow. It's oh, a is it boost? Is it non-boost? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's just like, it's so insane. <laughs> yeah. So uh, to think that you're going to come and do that, I mean, I don't know. Um, but today's point, clearly there are, uh, oh, look at that. Wow. Got a little it's romance, a, romance yeah. in a podcast right here. <laughs> Yeah, you're on. Yeah. You're on my, uh, my my uh, oh, it's so oh sweet. man. Yeah. <laughs> you know, my wife came um, in in my office, uh, did something similar, walked right by me, left for the day, no kiss. Oh, <laughs> ah, see, getting spoiled. Uh -huh. Still fresh after 42 years, guys. Uh, I'm there you, you go. So. Pretty, pretty um, amazing. But yeah, it's it's yeah, it's. No. Oh, go for it, Dave. Yeah, I'm, and I'm sorry because this is, is something that's obviously near and dear to my heart. So I'm sorry to cut you off, John. But no, you're fine. But but Mike, you, you I think you hit something that's really important, right? It's, we're so driven by innovation, right? And at the end of the day, what percentage of the people that ride bikes does that appeal to, right? Uh huh. You know, when the vast majority of the people that are that we or that are riding bikes or that we should say a better yet that we want on bikes yeah. are never going to know the difference between boost and non-boost right and never going to know the difference between them i'll give a plug for marginal gains <laughs> of, you know of integrated headset with all the hidden cables oh. versus right and yeah you know, the business, the industry, I think will take off or take off, listen to me, but you know, when it's not as intimidating, like what's the, what's the number one reason why there's not a lot of women on, well, part of the reason is women are intimidated to go into bike shops. Well, people are intimidated to go into bike shops, right? Yeah. Because yeah. the people in the bike shop can't talk about the giant, you know, um, casual ride around road bike yeah. right mm -hmm. you know, they can't they can't talk about that bike that someone wants to use just to ride around the neighborhood because we're all so we got a hard on for <laughs> you know the the higher end bike right yeah yeah i'm, I'm getting excited right now <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah you're talking about high-end bikes yeah. Yeah. right yeah oh, mike's okay. like i don't yeah <laughs> I don't want to talk about the Dave, Dave, let's not go talk about the escape. Let's go yeah. right to the propel. Let's go yeah. to the right. propel so. advanced SL zero. Come on. Well, now both yeah. of you guys. So do you agree, been... John? Do you, do, you, do you agree with that? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's tricky because a, a lot of the bike shops that you roll into, not all of them, but either that bike shop is connected with, you know, mountain bikes or that bike mm -hmm. shop is connected with road bikes. Um, but then you have some shops that are totally family shops. Like they, you don't even have a bike over twenty five hundred dollars. Right. Um, but every shop should be able to serve that particular customer um, that's either looking for, you know, their five hundred, six hundred dollar little hybrid bike that they're just going to ride around the neighborhood with their dock or something, you know? Yeah. 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 And, and it's. And like you say it on innovation, right? It's like all these things are changing and they're changing so fast. It's like, you know, I, um, my girlfriend's, uh, 
uh, girlfriend's friend was looking for a uh, for a shop or for a job. No bike shop, you know, knowledge at all. Never been into a bike shop uh, to work, mm -hmm. and uh, got him on board um, as a bike builder. And it's it's so interesting, right? Because it's like. Oh, okay. You know what? In this aspect, you got to look at this because this is different, right? And it's mm -hmm. it's funny looking back at it. You're like, damn, man. There's you got cable brakes, you have hydraulic, you have V brake. It's just you have all these different things. Yeah. Um. So I get it for people who are either buying bikes. You know, there's so much. There's so many different variations, and and yeah. even bringing people on board. You're like, oh my god, I got to show you how to work on on this because this is totally different <laughs> than what you just did. So right. Yeah. Well, and you know, I both you guys have been through one of my clinics, I believe, and mm -hmm. um, and that's one of the things that I talk about is uh, like we we uh, focus on all this technology and yeah. um, and we're uh, driven by it, but the customer a lot of times not so much. Uh, mm -hmm. They may they may want the thirty thousand foot view, not the. <laughs> not the in the weeds view. Right. And, uh, and so I always try to say like, Hey, this stuff we're talking about here is really high level stuff. And what I want you to do is just kind of put it in your hip pocket yeah. and don't, don't just go out there and blurt all this out. You know, yeah. you want to hang on to it all and let the customer do the talking. And then when there's a spot where something that you have in your hip pocket makes sense, then you can interject something, yeah. but to go out there and just, Blah, 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 blah. all this product <laughs> yeah. product barf on somebody yeah you know and then they're just going to be like wow that was so much i don't even know where to begin right and then they leave there they go to the next guy he's like hey bikes are fun and then yeah. it's like it, out they go with a bike yep. you know yep. so yeah. uh yeah you want to uh but it's hard because the industry we do get young enthusiasts yeah by and large mm -hmm. uh that are are the the people that are working the floor and you know they're all driven they can't wait for the next whatever wi whiz bang widget thing for their right. downhill bike and uh you know they're trying to relate to somebody that's a soccer mom she's trying to buy a bike and so she yeah. can throw her kid in a trailer you know yeah so yeah it's it is uh it's challenging in a lot yeah. of ways and I, I do feel like the industry could do a better job with that too like uh, all of our marketing is all you know, or not all of it. Most of it, though, is yeah. really focused towards that enthusiast. Somebody sending it over some forty foot double, you know, right. like yeah. yeah. I might, I might have had a um, that problem a little bit. Who with a which was a, a, an excellent um, employee of mine. Um, mm -hmm. This guy will, um, but <laughs> but really, what did he know? He he knew you know, uh, um, uh, Whistler and whip off, right. Yep. Yep. <laughs> you yep. know, North that Star. was his pedigree, right. So yeah. you know, it just, it, you have to be, it, it's, it's, I go back to the woman analogy. You have to be able to step back yeah. and understand what they want. Not let's, Oh, you know, no, 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 no. You don't want to talk about like, flying gaps and stuff like that yeah. that i'm not interested right yeah. so <laughs> yeah um yeah so. and, and it was cool at eden too right where everybody had their own kind of channel right mm -hmm. you know i had you know for me um you know i was definitely interested more on the mountain bike side and mm -hmm. um you know we had our guy connor he was just super in depth with suspension. I mean, he could tell you this stuff that I I couldn't even really understand. Yeah. Um. Right. And then you had like Chris Cover really into road. Galen too. Right. Yeah. Um. And so it was always fun. Like someone comes in and they're looking for you know let's say they're looking for a road bike. I'm like, oh here, let me let me pass you off to Chris Cover because you know she has a couple and she rides a lot and you right. know that was her her thing so that was uh it was always cool to kind of see that at eden and and you see it really at most bike shops but mm -hmm. we really channeled it there so yeah the diversity of doing. staff mm -hmm. yeah and that's kind of what you're doing with your your pot right and embedded yes. in yeah 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 so uh yeah no i'm really excited i already have the next i don't know three to four guests lined up um, yeah so I, i'm stoked how so often how long, are you, how long yeah. you been doing this and how long how often are you recording and what Once episode a week. are you on? Yeah. Okay. 
once a week. Uh, episode two is the latest one. So we're, I mean, we're, we're real young here. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, come talk to us when you're at like 150 something. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is, uh, it has been a lot of fun doing it and yeah. you know we're like to dave's point you know you we've got so many episodes in the bank and it's yeah. like um you think back on a lot of them like i it really it's fun yeah. but man it's so beneficial yeah. i don't know if dave feels this way but i feel like we're we've benefited so much from doing this and yeah. the different people that we've had on and all the different stories and the uh, the obstacles, the uh, some, the surprises. Uh, it's just, it's super cool. And absolutely, uh, yeah. So I, I hope you can have a similar journey to what we have, uh, we've experienced on our end. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's you know, it kind of goes hand in hand to my new role, right? I mean, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's just something new. It's I, I, you know, I don't, you know, just I've never really done this. I mean, I've done. Uh, you know, some buying at Eden, but you know, the online stuff, I mean, that I, that I did is, I mean, that was totally new. I said, okay, cool. Like I'll figure it out. Like, yeah. Um, and the website you know, we, looks fantastic by the thank way. Thank you. Yeah. 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 No. So we, yeah. we completely redid the website and, uh, you know, I'm doing the emails and, and it's just, you know, I was telling, I, you know, when I was talking to Connor, it's like, man, like if, you know, you don't, if you've never done it, don't sway away from it. Just, just dive in, dude, you know, um, yeah. you know, there's always people to talk to about it and get information and just learn how to do it because, you know, now it's just another tool under my belt. Yeah. Right. Well, and the, uh, you know, I bet you Connor could relate to that because yeah. you know, like you said, he's a suspension, suspension mm -hmm. guru. Mm -hmm. And how did he become that? Right? right. I mean, you know, he just threw himself into it and, and started working on the stuff and figuring things out. And yeah. I remember him just like tearing down a fork and he just didn't, you know, flew it all over the place, you know, uh -huh. um, but he just started, he started doing it and he YouTubed and he called the Fox and he, you know, he called all these guys. And um, I mean, now he could probably do that blindfolded. Yeah. Yeah. Really cool. But you, you know, Mike, I, uh, you said something that we've benefited and mm -hmm. I don't want to get all emotional here, John, but I, I really think that, you know, my thing is that I hopefully that the people listen have benefited also. That's because I think of our diversity of right. mm -hmm. what we're trying to bring on, you know, yeah. the the para athletes and the el the um, older athletes. And then, yeah. you know, uh, and 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 I think that you're so I, I think on some level, I'm hoping we're providing a service. But I think what you're doing, too, John, is is refreshing too that you're trying to show to people you know look you don't necessarily have to go to yeah. harvard to get uh, a a degree to have a fulfilling life right if you love what you do it's classic right yeah if you love what you do you never work a day in your life right yep. so and if that's what you're doing and can open people up to the opportunities in the industry then you're providing an amazing service and hopefully a boom to the industry as well. Right. You know, let's, let's take this seriously. The ind the bike industry is, is a career opportunity. Yeah. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. yeah. Any, any Avenue that you really, you go through, right. I mean, you could stay at the bike shop. You can, um, you know, you could be just like Doug, right. I mean, he owned yeah. a shop and then he, you know, now he's, uh, you know, uh, inside or... with Fausto Pinarello. I mean, come on, yeah, what more right? could you want? Right. Come on. <laughs> yeah. That episode was awesome. I was like, man, this is so cool. <laughs> How cool is that? Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh right? my gosh. Yeah. yeah. And to uh, hear that he's, and the company's just like really cool. You right. Know? Like, yeah. Like you'd family oriented. Like you'd almost. hope and expect, you know, and yeah. it is, you know, it's really yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah that's, that was really cool. Um, yeah, it's similar to what we try to do here. You know, like Dave brought up athletes, but we've had a yeah. ton of industry people on. And it is like an idea. The idea, you know, when we first started, it was just kind of like, hey, I know some people. Yeah. And we can get them on and let's just talk to them, you know. And then yeah. from there, um, with the original host, Bo, you know, right. Bo had a little different take on 
on cycling and he was coming at it from outside the industry and right. he would reach out to these different people i don't know if you ever heard the episode with john and mira the uh they're like uh they do the tour uh the tour divide and okay it's, yeah i think i remember a, that he's a dog packer is what he calls it so he yeah. does bike bike race bike packing races with his dog yeah and so that that was uh that was really enlightening you know that's not something i had no visibility to that whatsoever right um and then all that was a thing <laughs> yeah, this guy comes on yeah. and then you learn about his story. I start watching his YouTubes and, you know, it's just yeah. there's so many uh, avenues with yeah. cycling, you know. Absolutely. You know, what's funny about Bo, I, I answered the phone and this was like maybe a week or two ago. Um, answered the phone oh. and, and right. And I'm, I'm at the shop and uh, this guy's asking about that you. It's a good thing you did this, John, because we wouldn't have known if you just said answered the phone. <laughs> yeah. We wouldn't have known because that's a good thing you. I had to throw it out there. This is the cycle. This is a jerk part of cycle jerks. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I have to. Every episode, I have to offend somebody yeah. with some sarcasm. I knew it was point, coming. So. The no streak's worry. intact, Dave. <laughs> yeah, well exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but so I answered the phone and it says, dude, help, you know, um, he's working at another bike shop, but he's trying to help out a lady up here. And I'm, I'm, I hear the voice. I'm like, man, like this, how do I know you? He's like, Oh, I don't know. I really only know Remy up there. I'm like, is this Bo? And it is Bo calling. Are you serious? Yeah. He called oh, our shop. Yeah. And I was like, Holy <laughs> shit, dude. Like, you know, you're all the way. I think it was some sort of charity thing. I don't, I don't remember what exactly it was, but it was okay. just kind of funny hearing him. Um, and it's just, it's, it's cool to, to always, you know, connect with people in the bike world. Right. Yeah. Um, especially in my case where, you know, I moved from, uh, you know, Castro Valley all the way up here to Roseville. I remember the first time I, I took, you know, uh, took a call and it was Robert Mann. Oh, right. You know, he's just like, John, hold on. I, oh, <laughs> you're there. <laughs> yeah you didn't stick with trek I said, no dude i'm i'm here he's like okay cool i'm coming up tomorrow man i'll see you there you know yeah. so it's, it's fun to you know reconnect with all these guys that you know uh that i worked worked with down there it's cool for sure yeah it, yeah it, it, but i think that in, in, you know i want to backtrack to what mike was just saying right like uh, the different avenue and i'm not telling you how to run your podcast yeah but i think it's critical to um what we do, and I, I would be my, if you're only on episode two, is that you, yeah. you know, just at least consider what I'm saying. If we were only to get, you know, a guy from Red Bull Rampage, a guy that, you know, sells reps Pinarello yeah. um, and all that stuff, we would be making a mistake that many bike shops make and we'd be appealing to this top percentage of yep. people that ride bikes yep. and let's face it mike and i aren't going to be able to compete because you know lance has his podcast garrett thomas has his podcast we're not yeah. going to be able to compete with that but yeah. if we have a person on that is um rides with his dog oh. right mm -hmm. or, or we have you know um you know, I still I'm, I'm so frustrated we haven't gotten this guy and he said he's going to do it and he's never committed. But I want to have a, you know, um, cardiologist on, you oh. know, that talks about strain on, you know, because I've had five cycling friends who died of heart attacks. Right. Oh, Believe yeah. it or not. Right. Yeah. So, you know, appealing to um, uh, that other audience or a different avenue. And I know Mike yeah. was a little hesitant. Um, we had a guy on that was from e-bike uh, uh -huh. from ebike.org right yeah and mike yeah. was like what's he going to talk about well this was really informative about ebikes in general and the ebikes are not appealing to that top 10 percent. they're appealing to i think you know the the lower percent, yeah. you know, the the casual rider the elderly rider so yeah. it's just a, it's about the diversity so that you don't um history doesn't repeat itself and where that snobby bike stop the shop right they can't relate to other people right? yeah no i agree um just opening up your arms and kind of trying to take everybody in you mm -hmm. know that, and and mm -hmm. it's cool too because um at bob's you know bob's is ran a little differently where it's it's more of a family store um mm -hmm. 
I mean, Eden was too, don't get me wrong. Um, you know, they, you know, we were definitely real communal there, but, uh, at Bob's, yeah. I mean, we have, you know, bikes for literally everybody, mm -hmm. e-bikes, yeah. um, you know, e-bikes that are, you know, at a good price point, you know, um, e-bikes that are at really high price points. Um, so yeah. it, that's cool to see, um, and just, you know, learning that there are other styles of running business too. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think you can be. I mean, they say that you can't be, but I think in in the bike industry, you can be all things to all people. Yeah. And really, you mm -hmm. know, there's no reason why. And I, you know, on on some level, I think that that we did okay at six fifteen. Yeah. You know, we we sold a crap ton of Yeti, right? Yeah. And we sold Colnago. So these were like, you know, uh, I'm. I mean, we had a Colnago bill that was. I think we topped out at fourteen thousand dollars. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. Um, but I also remember I was thinking about the other day, Mike. We had a demo day, and Mike was gracious enough to pull the giant van up, and we had all these bikes out there, and I was all stoked about doing a, you know, demo day with Mike. Yeah. It coincided, no coincidence, with one of my shop rides. And I'll never forget the a woman pulled up and she was on a uh, like a cruiser bike with a basket, and she said, "I got your email. Um, I'm here for the sea ride." And I went, oh "Okay." God. So I <laughs> said, "Mike, I gotta go," and I jumped on my bike and we did a seven mile ride with this woman, nice. you know, who had a basket on her bike. Yep. Right. You know, and yeah. so I, I think we, you know, we were all things to all people, if you will. Yeah, absolutely. Right? I mean, that shop was to, huge. You really, yeah. You don't have to pick a lane, so to speak. Right. Right. And some people do. Right. I mean, there's definitely people who are, you know, like um, you guys had him on before Matt LaProd. I mean, he, right. his, his current, he owns a shop now. Right. And his, yep. I mean, that is just Gucci, super Gucci stuff. Yeah. Right. And service. Um, yeah. And Dave worked at a uh, local dealer here, my buddy's bike shop. And yep. they're all mountain, you know, Dave, well, all it Dave, is. Dave really tried. And I tried when they opened. Yeah. Um, but really, you know, I think back to uh, the owner, Chris uh, Baratlas. Yeah. And um, when he first approached me, yeah. he wanted a mountain bike shop. And I told him, I said, man, that's really hard to do. He just wanted to sell Santa Cruz and Giant. Yeah. <laughs> just mountain bikes and i said yeah. man show me an example of this working anywhere in the yeah. bay area just doesn't it, that doesn't happen so i sent him on a on a tour i think he came to eden even yeah but anyway he went and visited a bunch of stores and then he came back he goes you know what right you're right after talking to these owners i do need to diversify i need to have kids bikes i need to have road bikes yeah. I, I need to have everything because it is tough huh. but when we put the road bikes in there and the gravel bikes and i mean they just have, they have no interest in it. No. And uh, they can't even, they not, it, so I applaud them for just being honest about it and just being like, you know what? I can't fake that. If that's what you want, go over here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is us. This is yeah. what we do. And, and you know what? And it's working for them. So it is. Uh, yeah. It so is. Yeah. I do, I do, I do applaud Chris too. I mean, I saw him at Sea Otter and he said, uh, hey, Dave, you know, if you know some place that um, if if you want a discount on like it was like arm warmers or knee warmers, like he says, I got all this leftover shit that I can't sell. Right. Yep. And I'm like, he goes, or do you know some place I can donate it? Right. And it, yeah. uh, it's just not in their DNA. And yeah. uh, to your point, I give I applaud him. He tried it. And then they just said, no, this is what I want to do. Right? Yeah. You know, and, and he's successful at it. He's so, killing it, man. Yeah, it gets harder though if when you nicheify yourself, right? Yep. It's harder in a in a in a lot of ways. Yeah. Uh easier in some ways, but <laughs> yeah. also um, you know, you gotta be really good yeah. at your given specialty and you gotta have a lot of in inventory and you gotta yep. you gotta have great mechanics. Yeah, and, and people uh, that are riding that stuff too, right? Yep. Um, I mean, if you look at Boralis, I mean, dude, you talk to anybody at Pleasanton Ridge, he oh, they yeah. know Chris. Yep. Right. And and Northstar. And Northstar too. Yeah. Yep. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, he, and he he just slays it on the mountain bike stuff. And because, um, you know, I, I kind of grew up at Pleasanton Ridge, you know, riding. And, you know, yeah. I remember when they're all all these trails, you know, they weren't even there yet. Right. Right. Um, that whole scene was uh, was crazy. I mean, I remember, you know, Sundays, it was me and my buddy Colin. You know, we were just we had shovels and we we're just building these trails, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but oh, now you're the one that left the beer cans up there, huh? Yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> There's probably a couple up there for oh, me. Oh boy. Oh man. Uh -huh. yeah. But and Will Stewart, you know, Will was yeah. there too, right? And uh, you know, we would just ride and build and uh now Baratlas is kind of you know, he's he's got a, an actual yeah. downhill trail there. You know? yeah, yeah right it's it, it's such a passion for chris mm -hmm. that you know it, it's yeah i mean and back in the day when i had mine too i think that i you know at that time i was still racing a lot and yeah. you know so people knew that i was passionate about bikes this wasn't just a business this was a passion and that's what chris right. has absolutely yeah. i will i will also say too that and i'm going to give a plug here for no reason be, other yeah. than chris is a friend but it speaks to what we brought up before yeah <clears throat> one of the reasons that he is very successful mm -hmm. is that he has bob who you know i said it before that um i was fortunate enough to have two of the the best mechanics in the world yeah and i have to say that i was also fortunate to work in a shop that had the third of those and that's bob that their mechanic right and yeah. so he's this guy is and he's a, he's amazing and i just think that i'm not it's not necessarily a plug for baratlas or for bob but it's just yeah. again uh, the the speaks to what we said before if you don't have the good mechanic then the people are going to turn to youtube and yep. you're not going to get that repeat business and i think we have to let people know that working on bikes is is it's a profession it's not yep. it's not a high school job it's a profession yeah it takes right. a long time and a long and time it takes a long time and honestly um you can always kind of tell when a when a shop is is really good is when the back end is just pumping right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. um and that's one thing that uh chris potavana you know he always instilled in pretty much anyone that worked there it's like this is the heart right mm -hmm. um if 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 the back area isn't you know rolling then everything is just kind of kind of fall through the cracks and um yeah. so you know having a good wrench learning on the bikes um i mean that's where it just that's where it all starts really yeah. yeah and and uh to Dave's point you know about chris that's a passion yeah that's one of the things i love about him he's he's so passionate and yeah um i think of myself as being very passionate and i know dave is as well yeah you as well john i think that um you know for the guy we were talking about all due respect to him coming from Best Buy or whatever right. into this industry, right? And he may be a passionate cyclist, and that's probably what drove maybe what drove him back to the bike business. And he yeah. just happened to work at Best Buy. Mm -hmm. Who knows what the backstory <laughs> is, right? <laughs> right. You know? But passion is what <clears throat> it makes you authentic, right? Yes. So you can't fake that. And yeah. so when someone you're trying to connect in uh in life in general but also in retail it's so important you connect with somebody and yeah. um you know having that genuine passion for cycling and riding a bike and what it does for you physically mentally emotionally you know and being able to share that with somebody who's walking in um that's where that's where the wins happen yes you know you can change somebody's life you yeah know? Um, yeah. and so, um, at the end of the day, that's kind of what, uh, keeps us coming back. And, you know, we're talking about passion. It's interesting. Have you guys watched the, the latest edition of the TDF Unchained? No, no. Uh -uh. My friend told me I got to see it. I yeah. yeah he, I've been hearing yeah. about that. All right. So I'm not, I don't want to ruin it for you, but there's this, the Tebow P there is, I can tell you this without ruining it. Yeah. Tebow Pino is a famous French climber. And um, he's had some great victories over his career, but this was his last year. Yeah. And to finish in France, uh, you know, as a Frenchman on a French team, uh, 
they they painted the streets pino i mean pino was everywhere and they had yeah something on the last it was called pino's corner and everybody was wearing pino shirts and wow they were it was just it was unlike anything and yeah he said when and he and he tried to win the stage so at the time he came through pino's corner he was he was on a breakaway he was like a minute 30 ahead of the peloton on wow a sol on a solo uh you know effort and yeah and it was just so cool to hear uh to hear him and then to hear his director sportif explain the situation and there was a lot of emotion and then to juxtapose that with uh jumbo visma which is uh the german team and they're very analytical and it's Yeah. methodical and you know and uh even the german director sportif said something <laughs> unsavory about uh the french oh, team yeah, and yep. so uh, so th this episode was the juxtaposition of these two things and both of those guys are passionate Yeah. but it's in a different in a different way but uh yeah all That's this talk super about cool. all this talk about passion just made me think about that episode and Yeah. uh yeah tebow pino to me is like he he's a hero Uh, yeah right yeah yeah he's a hero <laughs> yeah how many you know if you look back i don't know if it was the year prior mm-hmm when he abandoned he had to abandon one of the things and like he yeah was crying getting into the car he was crying yeah getting in the car this wasn't like oh fuck, i'm just gonna go home now i'm over it's like he was crying so yeah you know there yeah was a certain level hey and uh You know, I would submit that there were probably people that recommended it, would have recommended that there were people that recommended that I close 615 long prior to when I did. But Yeah. for me, it was such a passion that I said, I'm I'm going to die trying. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's just the way I felt about the business. Yeah. Right. So, Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, it's like, I remember the, I remember the day Chris told me he sold, right. Um, it was a Monday. We were closed Sunday, Mondays, you know, and he's like, Hey man, you texted me on Sunday. He's like, Hey dude, any way you can roll into the shop? Like, I really got to tell you this thing that I've been, you know, thawing over now. And, um, you know, at first I didn't really think he sold the shop. Right. I thought maybe he was, uh, you know, he bought a van and he was going to escape for three or four months. And I had to just take on more at the shop. Mm hmm But I remember I, I rolled in through the back door and there's Chris and Aaron. Right. And if there was a meeting with Aaron, his wife, I, it was like, oh, no, he did do it. mm hmm He did, right? so you did have some premonition when you saw Aaron like oh Yes. man maybe he sold it Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and honestly, I, I kind of knew probably a little bit of it, alluding to it beforehand. mm-hmm Um, the top secret uh, the key right, you know, he, he bought the house in Nevada City, and he bought right the van, and yeah um, we're seeing more Trek in the store, you know. mm hmm Anyway, um, you know, I felt super happy for him, but I remember when we had the meeting with everybody else, you know, which was the next day. yeah Um, you know, and it was after work and he told everybody, everybody was just super shocked. Right. yep Um, yeah. And then once he did the meeting, man, I just started to kind of tear up. I was like, shit, like, you know, this, yeah I've, I've worked here now for 10 years and, you know, I, this shop was, uh, you know, taught me so much and I've met so many people and, and I've kind of just gone through my life, um, you know, learning new things through this shop, you know, with, with school and um you know pretty much being a grom to being the second man right on board right yeah um it so was yeah a great passion it, it was a great arc for sure it was yeah yeah i mean I, I learned everything through that shop really um yeah and chris and cover and um mm all the different guys in the uh, that went through the shop so yeah it was definitely -hmm. yeah It was just like, oh my god! Like I'm starting to cry a little bit here. So, <laughs> i'm sorry john right? yeah Right? <laughs> yeah well I, you know for me like i was you could put me in that shocked boat Yeah. too because i knew that he Yeah. was you know because like i was saying earlier i knew he was kind of like 
set trying to set up the shop to run better without him but i yeah. always thought that that was like you thought uh -huh. like he yeah he's got this house in nevada city maybe he's gonna spend you know maybe a week uh a couple weeks a month there and then yeah they'll have the shop set up and then he's got yeah. the van and he'll maybe do this and i just didn't see and then when he told me i just like i just couldn't even believe it i was right. just like are you <laughs> kidding me right and yeah yeah, and then, and for, yeah, go yeah, for it. and for it to be Trek, too, be right? Not yeah. specialized because at the time, specialized was buying up shops too. Yeah, and we had yeah. a lot of specialized too. Right, so it, that right? seemed to make more logical sense, yeah. Yeah. Uh, unless you're playing for a checkmate like Trek. Right. <laughs> yeah, they did it, man. Yeah, yeah they set said. it up, right? Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's just funny, you know. It, you know, and then you know when Trek started to kind of come on board between those kind of two months, you know, again, like I said, I didn't really know if I had a job. I had the district manager and I remember, uh, it was like the very last, um, interview I just canceled. Yeah. And, um, yeah, good the, for you. Right. Yeah. So it felt good about it. Yeah. And, and, right. And, uh, yeah, it was kind of middle finger up. Um, yeah. but I remember that day, the, the Trek uh, district manager rolled. I mean, he came in super fast. I mean, he, he oh. went straight to Chris, right? Uh huh. And uh, and then he talked to me, and he was, you know, definitely shocked. And um, because I think they kind of already had their, I think it, you know, they already had it coming for me. Um, right. Right. And uh, so yeah, you know, when I talked to him, he was just kind of like, "Good luck," you know. I I I don't think you made a good decision here. Mm -hmm. Um. But what's funny is that I remember I got these tickets from a from a one of the reps um, to go to this like Ferrari race day in Laguna Seca. Oh, wow. Right. And it was just super good. I mean, you had to be in the know for these tickets. Yeah. Um, and it was like at what they call turn 14, which is where all the good, like really nice, you know, everything's paid for. You eat for free, drink for free. Um, oh, man. Nice. Right. And I remember I, I get there and it was like the first two minutes. I'm like, oh, my God, that's the that's the Trek district manager. Oh, geez. So I'm like, hey, what's up, man? How you been? Like, <laughs> you know, yeah. it was just this whole like he was so shocked. It was just like this awesome feeling. My girlfriend's like, of course, you know, somebody here. Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah. But yeah more just... importantly, though, it speaks to it. You know somebody there, but you knew someone that got you there. And that yeah. speaks to what we've been talking about. I think the, the theme throughout the thing, throughout this discussion, is yeah. that there's something other than just retail knowledge yep. that that will endear, you know, that, that makes that shop run. Yep. It, you know, and it's, it, it, it is the relationships it's the community it's all that and just plugging in mr best buy yep i'm sure it's going to work and i'm sure the stores are profitable but yeah. the question is okay yeah great we're 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 meeting our kpis but what could it be yeah. if we had this other layer right yeah. right yeah, yeah i agree for sure yeah yeah i mean hey the bike industry is a lot of fun it, it got a bunch of passionate people that really yeah. care about it and want to get you set up on on a, on the perfect vehicle so you can, yeah. uh, you know, be do it instead uh, for the rest of your life as opposed to just get buying something, riding it a few times, and then sticking it in the garage because it didn't really meet the mark. That's yep. Or, it's yeah. starting the journey, right? Yeah. I mean, and, you know, I can even remember the first time I went to Interbike and it was in Vegas. I mean, it was oh, just yeah. this eye opening event you know first you have vegas right yeah and but then you have this just bike stuff everywhere right mm -hmm. everybody's talking about bikes um you know everybody's riding bikes they did cross vegas that year i went oh yeah you know, it was sick. Me, yeah right so sick me and jenner and um you know that was like the first you know uh i kind of related to like the first time i ever went to sea otter right oh okay yeah right it's just yeah. like you know i'm 15 16 or whatever and everything is bikes. It's yeah. just like, oh man, this is so cool, so cool. Well, that's that's the thing. Like, I uh, see, I I'm kind of like a salesperson for Sea Otter. I feel like a lot of times yeah. 
because a lot of dealers in the Bay Area, they just kind of dismiss <clears throat> it like, oh, yeah, sea otter. Uh, yeah. You know, it, it's just like, no, no excuse yeah. me. <laughs> this is so, huge, dude. This is your industry. <laughs> yeah. And it's here. Yeah. You know, it just go mingle. Yeah. You know, it, even who cares if you race a bike or not? Just go you meet your vendors, yeah. check out all the new products, get, yep. you know, have a story to tell for that customer that comes in. There's enthusiasts that maybe miss the otter or, yeah. or, you know, missed a detail on a Vittoria tire that you saw that you were yep. all excited about or whatever it is, yep. you know? So it's such a huge opportunity. And I do feel like it is hard to take those time, the time off, but totally. there, it's Thursday through Sunday. So it doesn't, yeah. you don't have to go on Saturday or Sunday. You can no. go Thursday and Friday, have yep. two great days and two very informative days. And they're also, there's not a ton of traffic on those days like yeah. there is on Saturday and Sunday. So yeah, I'm always yeah. harping about it. I know Eric's sick of listening to me um, <laughs> uh, talk about it because those guys need to go. They yeah, need they to need go. to go. Absolutely. Yep. I mean, it's huge, right? Yeah. I mean, I remember, you know, telling, uh, you know, a dad and his son about it, you know, maybe two or three weeks before and, and they ended up going and, you know, yeah. they, you know, the kids racing mountain bikes and I mean, it, you could just see how stoked he was. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. It's like, it, dude, this is huge. It could be yeah. the thing that actually makes somebody get it. You yes. Know? Like they yeah. have the bike and everything and they're kind of having fun with it. Yep. And then they go to Sea Otter and it's just like, oh, kaboom. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I would say though that to to the point, I think that now that Sea Otter has kind of taken off, if you will, and, and maybe I'm just missed it because I didn't know much about Sea Otter before I opened the shop either. Yeah. Right. So yeah. Mm -hmm. So maybe it is, but it seems to me that Sea Otter is the event yeah. now that Interbike is no longer, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I yep. think that Sea Otter has a, a branding issue in that in it is, you just mentioned it, like uh, it's mountain bike, mountain bike. And, you know, everyone talks about the dual slalom and the downhill yeah. there. Mm -hmm. And while I was working, I was working um, the USA Cycling booth, helping out a friend uh, during this last Sea Otter. And they were trying to recruit people for track. Yeah, and the vast majority of people that came in were all were mountain bike gear and all this other stuff, and 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 you know we had a couple people that had you know raced Hellier. Yeah, but you didn't get a lot of people. The the I would say that eighty percent of the traffic were people that were about mountain biking, and so that's the point. If we can, yeah, if if they can, you know, kind of make it known or you know market the fact that this is for everybody, mm -hmm. right? Um, you know, and there is a reason to go to the giant booth because giant also has their escape or their e-bikes and all yeah. that, then, then I think more shop owners would probably take notice and, and, and go. Right. right? Yeah. It's not I, just a dual I, slalom party, you know? <laughs> right. I, yeah. I, I, honestly, I stayed behind. I drew the short straw when I had my shop yeah. and my mechanics went down because they were interested in the you know the the mountain biking aspect of it so i would stay behind and i said i don't care if i go to sea otter yeah having gone to sea otter now and taken the time to walk around and jack grew was there and yeah. you know victoria tires to your point right yeah. i now ride a different style victoria tire yep. because i was there and, right. uh, and you talk to the product, you know, you talk to many times you're talking to the product manager. Yeah. Maybe they'd even design the tire. Right. You know? And so those are insights that you just don't get uh, surfing the net. Um, yeah. I think I think the thing with uh, to your point, Dave, Sea Otter, the dual slalom at Sea Otter is such an epic event. Yeah, but I think it just overshadows everything else. But they they have everything. The you yeah. know gravel road and the e bikes the are yeah e bike the the yeah. courses are fantastic. Cross yeah. I raced I raced cross there one year. Yeah. They had this killer uh, wooden thing that they built like this. Yeah, you rode underneath it and then you had to circle back and you had to run up this. Oh my god thing and <laughs> it, it it was awesome. You know, yeah. it was a, and and then you come through the pits. And like all the, I mean, there was just so many people there and they're all, you know, yeah. just cheering you on and everything. So yeah. everyone's anyway, having fun, right? Everyone's lot, yeah. having fun and you're talking to people and, um, 
you know, I think the weekend after there's a, there's a race in Nevada or a grass Valley called TDS. And it's kind of the yep. same thing. I mean, it's definitely focused mainly on the mountain bike. It's an enduro race, but for sure, you know, you get to talk to all these people and, uh, products and all, you know, companies are there. It's just like, oh man, this is so fun. So, yeah. All right. Well, listen, uh, I know you, you got, uh, you got to get on, you got work to do. And, yeah. Um, I have to go but... jump into the bike shop. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. Got a well, shop to run. Let's leave everybody with bikes are fun. Yep. That's, uh, that's a no doubt whether you race or ride or whatever you do, just you ride with your dog. There, you yeah. Ride with your dog. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah cruiser with a basket. You know, go yep. see John. He'll help do the, you out. Do the I'll seat ride you. with Dave. Yep, yeah. exactly. And then you can yeah. go do 150 miles with our guy, Remy. <laughs> yeah, oh, there God. you go. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dave right checked on. out on that one right God. at the beginning of the podcast. Yeah. 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 I'm going to work on I, you, Dave. You're not, I you're not the, getting off that easy. It's like, it's like when I got a, I got a tattoo. I announced that I was getting it with sue in the room and all these other family members so she couldn't <laughs> really object you yeah. know so what's she gonna do start a fight with me there so right. i had an audience here so i could tell mike i wasn't doing it so it kind of softens <laughs> the blow yeah. there no, you go. you're you're doing it you're <laughs> yeah. doing it just you don't late. know it yet you're doing it you didn't right. get written up for that <laughs> all right <laughs> yeah all right john hey uh, how right. do you so again the podcast is called embedded embedded uh, in cycling Embedded in cycling. Yeah, there yep. are several embedded, uh, John, there's several podcasts with the name embedded, but embedded yep. in cycling. Embedded in cycling. Yeah. So look for that. And then yep. uh, do you have any social media set up around the podcast? Or I do. Yeah. yeah I, okay. I just, um, I just launched an embedded in cycling underscore podcast on Instagram. Um, and you can also follow me, which is Johnny D underscore MTB. Um, and you can find that on Instagram as well. Uh, the uh, podcast it goes through Buzzsprout, which is what you guys use. Yeah. Um, I'm still getting the Spotify and Apple and all that stuff set up, so I'll have that set up this week. Um, but yeah, Great. you should be able to find it there. All right. When do new episodes drop? Do you have a set day that you're dropping episodes? You know, I, I'm dropping them on Thursdays. Okay. Yeah, because that that's my day off. Day. One of my days that off. That is a great day. That's the yeah. same day we drop. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit, that's right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Perfect. Yeah. Well, yeah, cool. good stuff. All right. Well, thanks so much, John. It's of been course. a pleasure having you on the podcast. Yeah. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. It's fun. It's always All fun. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll catch All you right. next time. Later. Uh, <laughs>